Assalamualaikum Sayyidi. Walaikum salam. Sayyidi, in, in history the 10th of Muharram is considered a blessed day. Why was Imam Hussain radiallahu anhu shaheed during that day? Alayhi salam. It is a, a blessed day as I just explained. It's the most blessed day. They were blessed because they were saved. So what could be a bigger blessing for the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad that Allah granted a grand intercessor for that nation in which accepted Amr Jabbar, a, a order that normal humans can't take even Amr, an order from policemen, a border patrol agent. But to be from Amr Jabbar means that from Allah's mighty kingdom a command comes that not a companion in Medina, not a, a wife of Prophet no one could understand what that command was for him. Because they were there, they had dreams, they said, we, we have dreams you're going to be slaughtered, they don't go. They betrayed your father, they're going to betray you, don't go. One of the wives of Prophet also, I have a dream, you're going to be slaughtered. Don't take your family at least if you're going. He said, Amr Jabbar, he said, but I've seen a dream in which Allah telling me to go. I don't have the luxury to say no. And if Allah's Amr and command is take your whole family into that field, maybe Allah will stop it in a different direction. This now is then the immensity of the faith because when Sayyidina Ibrahim was shaking when the Amr came and because of the shaking Allah just says, we give with the ransom, don't, 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 don't you know collapse, we're going to give the ransom and it'll be finished. But that child Sayyidina Ismail salam, is from that light that he was going to sacrifice himself because Sayyidina Ismail knew Isharat came to his heart, your father going to slaughter you. So he went and gave tranquility to his father, right? His sakina came by the words of Sayyidina Ismail otherwise his heart couldn't do it. So his, his peace came when Sayyidina Ismail taught his father that, don't worry I know what Allah's ordered you, you'll find me to be in submission. It immense, it changed his heart completely with peace. That this is not something criminal, this is something Allah wants. So his sakina came from the child, so it means the immensity of his station, that you're sacrificing your property, I'm sacrificing myself. This is the line of Sayyidina Muhammad that they live with Sayyidina Rabbika one har. That was now the kawthar coming, that's why Zamzam was open for Sayyidina Ismail because he has to be fed and nurtured from the Zamzam Kawthari reality because of who his soul represents. This is a Muhammadan light now coming onto this earth, the real, the real firqa of Muhammadan light is coming through Sayyidina Ismail So then this reality of Sayyidina Ismail is then going to be completely fulfilled by all the companions, all Ahlul Bayt and then the pinnacle of them Imam Hussain Salam. They come and say that we're the family. Now if you're family you're supposed to be royalty and everybody's supposed to treat you different and you don't have to do anything. Their family, no, no we're the ones will sacrifice and, and be in the most difficulty and laid the whole foundation of intercession. So it's a, it was a happy day for his reality, he achieved what nobody could achieve He's happy for his station. It's sad for you to hear it, we hear it because we feel the sadness that how a nation does this against themselves. And don't think it's a history story, they say everywhere on this earth is Karbala and every day for Ahlul Bayt is Ashura, every day they're attacked and they're attacked by the same understanding of people who have hasad, that people cannot stand when the Ahlul Bayt are teaching and propagating knowledges, they want to silence them, they spread rumors about them, they backbite them. All of that is like a thousand deaths because if you kill somebody one time he's dead. But if you backbite him every day it's as if you killed him a thousand times in his life. 
So it means this is all, all the system of this dunya. So Imam Hussain salam then gives the grand intercession where your nation and all these people and all these groups that are going to go astray, 72 groups Prophet described would go astray and one group would be correct. So who's the one group? The group that loves Imam Hussain You call them Sunni, you call them Shia, they better love everybody by the example of the love of Imam Hussain because he teaches you, you have to love Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, you have to love all the holy companions, you have to love the family and this is what we symbolized. They symbolized the love of the way of Sayyidina Muhammad and they went into the field of struggle and that becomes the example. And that's why you see all the real Ahl Sunnah, they have immense love for Imam al Hussein, they all have Husseini names. And most of them are under the tariqahs of Imam Ali Salam. So all the tariqahs are sort of filled with the love of Imam al Hussein and Ahl al Bayt. So alhamdulillah, it's an immense day of, of lights and, and openings. We said that in the world of sainthood, there can be no one granted sainthood without Imam Ali Salam signing for them. And this is according to Naqshbandiya, so if anyone says that's not true you have to go back to Imam al-Rabbani said, yes it is correct that all sainthood is granted by Imam Ali Salam. So when the servant is going to be raised up, Imam Ali Salam signs and authenticates this person truly is on the path of sainthood and then will be inspired in the way of struggles. If a servant is going to reach a station, mushahada in which their heart opens and they can begin to witness the unseen, they have to be signed off by Imam al Hussein salam Sayyid al-Shuhada. So anyone whom sees their Sayyid and their master is Imam al Hussein salam so That's not small stations that Allah grant, this is all of all realities. Qurat al Ain, that these are the blessed eyes of Sayyidina Muhammad With what reality Allah created that holy soul that its example on this earth was the immense reality of sacrifice and the maqam of annihilation. The immense maqam of annihilation, when we talk fana and annihilation everyone talks spiritually to be annihilated. The, the master of that maqam comes to show physically, I've been annihilated. What you talk about spiritual with your people, I did it physically, physically field of battle with all the family and his children. And that was complete annihilation. So these are immense, immense souls that lead and teach by example, not by words but by actions. We said the Siddiqs are whom their actions and their deeds talk for them. You don't have to testify to anything in life that you're great, you're special, you're this, your deeds should be talking for you. But I don't know what the guy says but I know all these deeds show you who he is, not his words. So they lead by that same example, this blessed soul is leading by the example. Not my status and I had a special status but I led by example of struggling in the way of Allah inshaAllah. Because they are the kawthar and at the end of that whole struggle he kicked the floor and the kawthar was coming from paradise, Zamzam was flowing. So it's not you who kept us from drinking but we were under the order of Allah to submit. We showed that we can bring water out, there's nobody who can refuse the water to Imam Hussain's holy lips. But Amr Jabbar is that if Allah didn't write it and he's seeing law mafuz, he's not going to drink it. Even if you put it in front of him he's not going to drink it. But don't think that with your little hands and your little feet you were able to keep this king of paradise uh, from drinking. 
And that not only that but they said 70 sultans of all jinn nations Mawlana Shaykh confirmed. There's not from other madhabs but from Mawlana Shaykh who was the head of Hanafi madhab of the time said that 70 sultan of jinns were present in the battlefield. Any one of them could have flipped the entire earth upside down. They're not only jinn they were jal with over 100 feet in height and their strength is not even comprehensible. Seventy kings of them on the battlefield with Imam Husayn Not one was told to enter into the field because this is again Amr Jabbar what we can't even understand. That's why it's called Amr Jabbar, it's, the, it's Jabarut and the intensity of, of it is not, a, is not a common command. It's a command that can't be understood but one between the servant and his creator understood that reality. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh What practices should we do for the 10 days of Muharram? Shukran Everything. for all your tireless efforts Sayyidi and Wa Alaykum As Salaam Everything. Do whatever you can, do all the awrads, the zikrs, the salawats, all the du'as on the app, uh, make your salawats, make dalal khairat and uh, if you can fast and you don't have any medical condition you fast is the greatest. The most immense amount of blessings that Allah is opening and lights that Allah is bestowing. And then definitely what partakes on the 9th and the 10th of Ashura and recognizing this immense sacrifice and that Allah dress us and bless us from its realities. So all that's been written in our articles and in our newsletters and, and all over our websites and apps, alhamdulillah. There's never a shortage of the ibadah and the, the actions to do, they're all on the website. You sit there and go through every single salawat, it'll keep you busy for the whole day. Read every single du'a and then read it another time if you like. There's so much to do that you'll be there for eight hours, ten hours, you still can't finish it. So alhamdulillah, just do as much as you can do uh, in these ten days and that Allah just save you and your families. I said before that you know just emailing that you know your children are in difficulty, your children are not listening to you, there is a system you know the rest is in Allah's hands. There's a system in which you do your practices, do your connection, do your meditation, visualize your children in the zikr with you. When you're doing and learning your meditation and visualizing the shaykhs and then ask the shaykhs to please bring the souls of my children, visualize your children in the zikr with you. You love them, Allah, was, Allah will bring them to be present with you. You dress them from the spiritual world. If their physicality is not going to sit, you bring them spiritually. And then you begin to understand how the shaykhs are working. We said before the shaykhs are not hoping that your physicality is going to come in line and, and submit. They're working on you from the other side. From the world of Malakut, their association, they see the souls of the students and their nazar and tajalli is going on to those souls of the students. If they want they can call an individual student and begin to focus on their soul and fix them, correct them, punish them, whatever is necessary. So this is not a physical, they don't have to get you by the ear and grab you physically and bring you and make you to listen. Because that would be an impossible tariqah, it would be like you know the billy goats running around the farm, <laughs> everybody would be going in a different direction. So Allah Allah, when Allah there is no guidance except when Allah guiding, He gives the tools of guidance. So when he, Allah makes somebody a doctor, not a doctor in, in, on, on Facebook, I've seen the street doctors in India, those are very scary. They do <laughs> dental work on the street. No, but when Allah make the person a, a doctor, what do He give them? He gives them an MRI, give them a CT, give them a CAT scan. Why all these technologies now? You know how advanced now their sciences are for these doctors? Before everything was guessing, now they put you on a machine and they see everything in your body. Well Allah doesn't have this technology for, for guidance. He, he wants you to do like Stone Age guidance. Where you grab the person and, and, and deal with them one? No. The world of Malakut is where everything is taking place. That's when we describe from Mawlana Shah Naqshaban, Tariqatana Soba al Khairu fi Jamia. It's not this jama'ah, but he's asking us, join 
our jama'ah. The teach your students on how to make tafakkur and by virtue of sitting with you, connecting and, and, and comprehending with you, you bring them into my association. And that's the real association, that's the association with all the nazar and fires and all the lights that Azawajal has bestowed upon them that they address the student from whatever is needed and they guide the student for whatever destination Allah wants them to achieve. So this is immense, immense blessings. Had Allah wanted based on our physicality then it would mean everything is based on your amal, based on all your physical and that is… it would be impossible, none of us would have achieved anything. But this is Allah's great, great blessing and, and love and this is the love for Sayyidina Muhammad that that guidance comes, those lights are dressed upon the soul by virtue of those lights that are dressed and a fires that dresses your soul, by virtue of that it took away many difficulties many difficulties from your physicality that can't, can't be understood because we didn't understand what a difficulty was coming and all of a sudden a light and a beatific light dresses your soul. That light enough changes what was bad, Allah rewrites it to be something good because now the soul has a different light upon it. This is Allah's ni'mat, this is how Allah is dressing from the world of malakut and people say, I didn't see anything. You didn't see anything, you, you, you missed a few hammers that didn't come your way. It's not what you wanted to see of all the great things but all the things that could have been extremely harmful in our lives, how Allah kept that away. Why He kept it away? Because you're handsome or no, maybe because you went to that zikr. Maybe you listened to that zikr, you did your salawats, you did a good deed in which your soul got dressed by something. As a result of that dress something was taken away that didn't come towards you and moved away in a different direction. So being grateful is not for all the things that opened for me but far more dangerous things that didn't come to me. So when someone very beloved to my soul got into an accident, the stick of the accident was right here, two seconds this way and it would have been headless. That's Allah saying, you don't have to say, oh this nothing open for me, nothing open for me, what do you mean nothing open for you? You could have been shish kebab because the stick goes this way, goes straight through your head. Allah saved it by virtue of the things you did in life. So Allah's ni'mat and blessings, not able to count them. So that's why we try to keep doing good, 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 that Allah keep the, you know, the endless bad that's all around us away from us, bala yashifu ghairuk, that keep bala away from ourselves, our family, our children and all our loved ones, inshaAllah. Uh, As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Is it alright to put conditions for kids to do good deeds? For instance, if they pray durood sharif I'll give them ice cream. Uh, Allah puts conditions on you to get into paradise. Allah is not saying, oh just do Ramadan because I want you to, right? So then they have to teach you all these hadiths, well you get paradise, you're gonna get a house there, you're gonna get all these gifts there, you're gonna have like lots of food there <laughs> in your soul light that I don't know how you're gonna eat there but you're gonna get a lot of food there. So Allah is, is doing the same symbolism for us that I have to lure you with paradise and all the beatific symbols of, of uh, rivers and grapes and beautiful things of paradise to lure you. Later when you rushed and you're mature, only Allah come and teaching you, ah, give up this thought of paradise. Do what you do out of love and that only I want you is your Divinely face, your satisfaction to be dressing me. Place me where is closest to you, I don't want a garden, if I want a garden I go down to Abbotsford to get a garden. I want to be in your Divinely Presence, I want your, your satisfaction to dress me, bless me, maybe call me into service on other planets, other galaxies. Allah make you to be in a Muhammadan dress and send you to a different galaxy to represent the reality. Don't have any idea what Allah has in store. So Allah is using the same principle. Tell your children too, 
is Ramadan time, okay we're gonna give out cash. Everyone's getting five dollars a prayer, dollar a prayer, fifty cents a prayer, everyone to their budget. And you put a chart out and you say, for every day you fasted this is what you get for that day. And they make… they say it and they think, oh at the end I'm gonna get you know fifty dollars and I'm gonna go get a toy or I'm gonna get twenty dollars, get a toy. And then same thing with your salah, you make a little card and say everyone gets to pray and every time they pray I put down how much money I'm gonna be giving them because Allah promises you paradise, their paradise is toys and candies and little gifts that they want, inshaAllah. As-salamu alaykum Sayyidi What is the best way to visualize the aura of the shaykh in meditation? Just visualize the shaykh. You don't need to know the aura of the shaykh. Just visualize the actual shaykh is sitting in front of you. The aura will come naturally in your mind's eye because you can't see the shaykh. So when you close your eyes to visualize the shaykh, you can't see the shaykh. But in your mind's eye, because it's not the physical eyes, in your mind's eye the, the sort of imagery of the shaykh will begin to appear. Faint, stronger, fade in, fade out and the responsibility is to keep that, keep that image and ask for the fires and the dress and the light to dress you. All of those are in the meditation book, Timeless Reality. So please get the timeless reality so that it's an encyclopedia and you keep making reference to it and reading it and, and you absorb that reality inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sometimes we get this feeling of current passing through body or goosebumps during muraqabah and see violet lights. What's mm. that reality? That's a good reality to see a current passing. As long as it's a spiritual current, you know, and not sitting next to like an electric blanket and then you're… because you're, 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 it's like a shortened line, you say, I don't know why I'm feeling like a lot of electricity is coming through, it's coming through. It's actually coming through because there's a… because <laughs> it was like that on a speaker thing. One time I was, I was feeling a… there was like a wire from a speaker that had a, a shorted <laughs> thing. Oh my God, there's so much power in the zikr, it was actually the, the line in the <laughs> Mm -hmm. Are you sitting on one of the cables? <laughs> so it's good to feel the energy. The reality of the energy is very important. That to feel the current and the energy that's the, the way of the muraqabah. The colors then they have different realities and different things but don't chase those, those things because then you keep looking for a color and imagining things. It's more important just to focus on the energy, I want to go into the energy oceans and that from every direction I'm asking for energy to dress me Ya Rabbi and that keep me in the presence of the shaykhs. Always asking for the shaykhs and when somebody says, why do you guys focus on having a shaykh? It's because you don't want shaitan. So that's the, the big danger. When you're not trained to understand that you need a shaykh to be present. So I'm, I'm give you an example by analogy and say, come with me we're going into this dark room. And uh, you say, no I'll go alone. So are you sure you're gonna go alone? Say, yeah I'm gonna go alone. And as soon as you enter that dark room you have no idea what lays for you or waits for you on that side. And when you're alone every type of mischief is going to happen and every type of deceit is going to be coming towards the servant. And that's where most of them will be lost because they entered into a darkness, they're not familiar, their vision is not certified vision. Because the shaitan in their room can give them a vision too, can send his energy on them, they think they're seeing light, they think they're seeing holy things. So anytime you say, I'm gonna go into that darkness by myself, it's already wrong because its example and dalil was Prophet Did he need Sayyidina Jibreel that he is from his light? No, he probably took Sayyidina Jibreel with his power, <laughs> he's the one with all the power. But he's showing by humility because there are going to be people later who will understand that when you do your practices our way is a way of humility. Whether who's lifting who doesn't matter, Prophet is, is showing for us that I took a companion and by that companionship I didn't do that alone. 
And as a result whatever you do in life make sure you have a companionship. So it's a sunnah to travel with people not alone. So imagine spiritual traveling, so I'm going alone in that room, who's in that room with you? At least if another person in the room with you I can verify what we experienced was good or it was not good what we experienced. So the same understanding of companionship is in spiritual. So the spirituality is the madaj where we connect, you make sure that your connection is first strong. When you're focusing all the time on connecting then you're building that relationship so that shaitans are not coming into this time that you're trying to make your tafakkur. But if you just go into dark room and say, I'm just going to focus on and hope something opens, of course there's already in that room ten, ten shayateen or, or nefarious jinn because your space is not cleared out, it's, they're not scared of you. So they're already in the room. So as you close your room, close your lights and sit to meditate, they're already all around you. Then they start to come into your mind, into your head, into every practice that you're doing. But as soon as you ask for madad, and you're asking for madad, you're asking for a force that's more powerful than yours. So when they come, they come with a tremendous amount of energy that most of those nefarious beings they run when that madad comes. And that's why the taweezes, the madad and the support. So when the madad comes and then you're focusing you're a lot more safer because now you know what you're trying to accomplish, you're trying to get the image of the shaykhs, these Muhammadan images they're very difficult for shaitan to impersonate. And when they think that they're seeing the shaykh they have to see at what degree are they seeing the shaykh. Somebody say, oh I may see the shaykh or in a not. How you see the shaykh is a mirror. When you see the shaykh and he's in full sunnah, he has got turban, he has his beard, he has all his sunnah clothes, you're seeing him in the correct seeing means that you're clean enough to see that. But when you look and you see the shaykh in an imperfection, you didn't get an eye into his world. But what Allah is showing you is that your imperfection is reflecting back to you. That's why you're seeing him without a turban, that's why you're seeing him without a beard because he's a mirror for you. Allah is not showing you who his station is. But when the person is clean doing their practices, then Allah will allow the clean image of the shaykh to come, the perfected image. So that's when they say, oh I saw shaykh Nazim, I saw this, okay well, how? Say, so, no he was in turban, his beard was there, it's a full sunnah, then there was a majestic dress and it's oh. correct. So no I saw him very casual walking here and there, so, no, that's, that's from your imperfection and inability to see that perfection. So that's also a sign that perfect your practices, perfect your heart, perfect all the cleanliness so that the shaykh's real images can begin to reflect onto the heart inshaAllah. InshaAllah, Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzat Amma Yasifoon wa Salaamun al Mursaleen Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa Hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa Basiri Surat al Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.